Friends, I'm doing a tutorial video today on how to put a head <laughs> on a person, replace uh, a head. I'm doing this for one of my friends who's trying to learn how to use Photoshop later. So Tim, this video is for you. He has sent me two images here. Uh, so I'm going to say File, Open. I'm going to get the two images open here that he wants me to work with. And it's pretty easy kind of what he wants me to do here so we got two images in one this lady's eyes are really open kind of wide everybody looks great the little boy everybody's you know, looking nice it's just she's got kind of a weird look on her face whereas in this image she's got kind of a good look on her face nice smile so I'm assuming what he wants is for me to get this and put it on top of her, her other image here so she doesn't have that kind of strange surprised look on her face so the way you're going to do this is, I mean, in Photoshop 2024, you see up top up here, I'm going to go ahead and just grab this uh, right here, the rectangular marquee tool or rectangular, rectangular should work for this. I'm just going to grab her head and her shoulders a little bit there just in case I happen to need that. I'm just going to draw a line around it. I'm going to do Command C on my Mac. I'm using a MacBook Pro. Then I'm going to go to the other image and I'm going to paste. I'm going to do a Command V, Command V, and there's the new head on top of her there. Now we're we're not uh, positioned just right naturally, so we're going to have to fix that. And the way I usually do, I usually go over here to where the layers are, and you can see I've got two layers here now. I've got I'm, I'm hitting this eyeball thing here to turn the layer on and off. I can take this layer and I can go down to an opacity of like 60 percent. And that's typically what I do to kind of line up everything. And the thing that's really cool is, is he has shot, Tim has shot these, uh, this picture here where everything is, you know, he stood in the same place. He shot them while they're sitting in the same place. So this will be an easy fix. All i got to do is I usually try to line the nose up. That's usually what I do. So there we can see I'm almost, see what I'm doing? Uh, I'm a little off. I'm just hitting my left, right, up, and down arrows until I get right where I want to be. Now I can change this back to 100% opacity. And that looks pretty good, except that, you know, there's a little bit darker. Um, it was a little bit darker here. We're, we're going to erase out all this stuff, this, this square edges here. But hey, man, pretty, pretty awesome job, Tim. I like the way you did that. Or It's going to be an easy fix. First, let's, let's do, let's uh, adjust the uh, I like to go to the camera raw filter. I mean, typically I'll do it this way. I'll just go ahead and I'm going to bump the exposure up a little bit. And I'm going to say OK. And now we're looking pretty natural. She's about the same color there as she is in the other image. You know, or at least she matches up with the other folks here in the image. Now here again, uh, I'm going to go over and grab this little uh, eraser tool, or it's actually clones, I'm sorry, the eraser tool. Ah, it's healing tool, my bad, we'll go crazy eraser tool here. And that eraser is big right now. I don't think I need, it for, the, need for it to be that big. I'm going to click the little, uh, you might have seen what I did up here to get in and change the size of the eraser. I'm going to take it down about 73 pixels. And I make sure I'm on the layer that I'm erasing from, right? So I'm going to erase here. Just kind of around her head like so. The thing I don't want to do is reveal the hair that's underneath there. So we're, we're getting close to what we want. We know I'm going to make the eraser a little bit smaller, okay? The reason I'm doing that is just so I can get in there and fine tune this. Let me take the, uh, let me take this off for a second. And see what I've got. So let's just go ahead and get everything. Now I could have. There's different ways I could do. I could have created a mask or something. To me, for this kind of thing, this is just as easy. It's about as easy as it gets to do it this way. You know, her head was tilted a little bit in the other one. We may have to do a little tricky thing or two to clone that. But I'm just very carefully touching that so that I get everything except for her hair. Let's turn the other layer back on and see if we've revealed anything we shouldn't. Yeah, that looks pretty good, doesn't it? I can see a little bit of her hair from the the previous, Im previous image. It doesn't, uh, it, it's not even noticeable by the time you zoom out. I can see a little bit of shoulder shadow in here. I could get rid of that maybe. Let's command zero that and see. I think that would totally 
fool anybody. Now, you know, we were we were squared off around the uh, pockets and everything too. Does that look okay? Let's 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 take a little bit of that out as well. Just so that looks blended in pretty nicely, doesn't it? There we go. So now we've got this new image where uh, the yes, well, on and off it here. And like I say, her uh, the color she was a darker in the other one. I don't know if we wanted to be darker. I, I think it matches up nicely with the rest of this. So yeah, I think we've got an image that he's going to be able to work with, and that was as simple as it was. Now what we're going to have to do is export this so that it's all on one layer, right? Now I can send him the Photoshop file where it's on two layers. I'm, I'll, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and save it that way in case he doesn't like what I've done. So I'll hit save. It's going to save it as a Photoshop image, and it's a PSD, so it's not going to overwrite anything. The other two are JPEGs, so it'll just save as a multi-layer. It's going to ask me maximize compatibility. Yep, we want that. And I'll uh, leave this for Tim to do any color adjustments that he wants to do. And we're going to do File, Export As. I'm going to save it as a JPEG. Uh, I'm going to do Level 7 so we've got the highest quality. He's got a 6,000 by 4,000 pixel image. He does have some vignetting up here. That, you know, I, if I were him, I would crop that out. This little vignette areas here may just do a crop, but I'm going to leave that up to him since he's the photographer. And I'm going to say export, and I'm going to export, uh, I guess I could do it right back into my into my downloads file, or I could just save it on the desktop. We'll call this image 7214 edited, and save. So now we've got a JPEG that I can send back to my friend. I'll close this, and that's really it. That's how I do it, the replacing the heads type thing. It always works best if it's, you know, every time you're shooting a portrait of somebody, shoot four or five, six of them. You never know when somebody's going to blink or somebody's going to have a weird look on their face or, you know, there's going to be a special twinkle in the eye or something um, and for your portrait. So stand right where you are, shoot four, five, six, seven images. I like, I, you know, I wish everybody would shoot in camera raw because it's just easier to edit the color uh, and everything. This was a regular RGB JPEG, but you can open it up in the camera raw filter, which honestly does better uh, for color correction to me than it does than the regular Photoshop. I, I prefer it. Yeah, I, we certainly could have gone into hue, saturation, and everything up here and done that as well. But I digress. So that's how you do these switching out the heads in Adobe Photoshop 2024. Hopefully someone's found this uh, helpful, especially my friend Tim. Peace to all who watch. Subscribe to the channel if you like.